I bring it back, I'm like, um, yeah, that's not going to happen in 30 seconds before they're supposed to be on. Do they want to start now, or do they want the microphones? And they said, of course, both. As you can tell, we were off to a good start. It went downhill from there. Uh, that was like the next morning. The next morning, uh, we sat down and said, okay, what time are you guys going to be here in the morning? So we make sure we have a good sound check. Let you guys get everybody get comfortable with the sound system, how it sounds, how you sound, all that kind of stuff. But then, okay, set a time. It was early. That's fine. We are here to serve. Sound men are here to serve. <laughs> this isn't facetious. That's the truth. When you're a sound guy, you're there to serve. That's, that you serve. You're not up front. So a few of us got there early, did not eat breakfast because we were up late, got up in time for, you know, first event of the day, 7 o'clock in the morning, getting there half hour, an hour plus early to do sound check. And guess what? Nobody shows up. <laughs> okay, so at this point, I'm on low blood sugar and irritable. And lack of sleep. And worked really hard. So at this point, we're doing video. We've got three cameras. We're doing lighting. We're doing sound. We've got our team everywhere. And I'm like, okay, guys, here's the deal. As soon as this event is done, power down, and we're going to get breakfast. We've got to take care of ourselves. We will be here all day. We don't just take care of it. So like, okay, guys. We shut up. They haven't showed. It's not our problem. It's theirs. We're going to get breakfast. We got to take care of the team. As soon as it was done, <clears throat> power down, power down, power down, power down, power down. I'm walking out. And this lady from the front of the big hall yells back, Can we do practice now? <laughs> like, we were here. We got to go to breakfast. And I walked out. And she looked at Sheldon. See what we got to put up with. <laughs> So I was having talks with Jesus, and you know, Lord, bring the fire pump. And later on in the conference, having nothing to do with her, they invited me to come up on stage. Now, techies are not known for being sharp dressers. I really wasn't. Um, when you're hauling junk and you're just running around and you wear black so you, you know, people look at you going, oh, Pete, and I wasn't looking, I don't remember what I was wearing, but wasn't that sharp. And they brought me up on stage and they gave me this. Yeah. Again, not the crazy thing leader. And they said to Brian Yeager, Extreme Team, for your commitment and dedication to youth evangelism in the North American Division. Well done, that good and faithful, faithful sir, and any youth ministry leadership convention in Atlanta, Georgia, February 23, 2002. I felt pretty special. <laughs> I didn't take it and like beat her with it or anything. <laughs> but I felt pretty special. I've been chosen. And I gotta tell you, as I walked off that stage, I was floating just a little bit. There in front of um, several hundreds of people. And I was recognized for the ministry that I'd done. And I was floating. Walked a little prouder, smiled a little bigger went back to ministry with more commitment and dedication because I've been chosen. I've been picked. I felt, I felt special. There's something powerful. When you feel special, when you feel chosen, it changes you. It changes you. It changes how you live. It changes how you relate to people. If you have your Bibles, uh, open up to 1 Peter, chapter 2. 1 Peter is near the end of the Bible. Uh, you got 1 and 2 Peter, 1st, 2nd, and 3rd John, and then the book of Revelation. So if you're anywhere not in those books, you're going to go towards the end. If you've hit Revelation, repent and turn back. <laughs> Nothing's anything wrong with Revelation, it's just not where we are. 